So Canada would tend to uh, have less inflation because of that. Uh, he says, I'm going to replace my vehicle within a couple of years. When's the best time to buy? And historically, December has been a very good month to buy. Uh, the reason why is people are out buying other things related to Christmas, and it's not usually automobiles. And so um, December is a good month. Uh, I bought several cars during December and got really good deals on them. Plus, you can always buy the outgoing year, which you can really get a good deal on. Well, you can do either. Uh, this this year, since this past December, uh, and now in almost all vehicles, uh, you can buy an 09 at the same price you could buy an 08 normally, and that would be a new 08. So let's take a $32,000 car and uh, and uh, uh, right now and since last December actually uh, there have been discounts that would allow that car to be sold at 25000 and in the 08 models at the same time uh, the price was about $3,000 less maybe a, a dealer uh, can give us a better picture of that if they'll send us some information. Um, when can I expect reaction in the market from earnings results? Probably very shortly. Uh, he expects good earnings probably based on lies. But what will happen to the gold price? No, I think the gold price is going to go up because I think people know that they're lies, especially professionals. And he says, should I sit on my money before investing? and gold shares to see which way these jokers uh, are going to go or what they have up their sleeve. And, you know, my feeling is we're in a bull market. I don't know whether the mark of the, the gold price is going to drop $100 from here or go up 300 Nobody does. And so if you agree and you think that the gold market is going to go perpetually higher for some limited amount of time in the future, then you're in a long-term bull market, and you should try to look for, if, if you're fortunate enough, to buy into one of these many, many corrections that we have. And, uh, and so that's the way I would base that. Um, he also says if all these countries or in debt to each other, wouldn't the debt just cancel each other out to some degree? And the, and the, and the answer is yes. The only problem, there are some countries that owe a lot more than others. That's what the problem is, and the big violator is the United States government. I mean, they even got the Fed buying paper from them, bonds, because they don't have any money and they can't sell them at these interest rates. That's what's going on. And so it all depends on who it is in the game. And he said, thanks for the most educational experience of my life. And thank you very much, Jim. Um, my husband and I, not me, this is questions in from Jim. My husband and I had to supplement both my mother and father over the past couple of years because they're both living on Social Security. Do you foresee a time in the near future that the government will just stop being able to send these checks out, or is it just going to be where they will still get the checks, but the buying power will be greatly reduced? In other two words, things. Okay, go ahead. I in other words, what do you see our government doing with Social Security? Well, inflation is going to continue to eat at it, and I that should last a couple more years. And after that, I think we're going to have deflation. And that's going to inhibit the government from paying out the full amount. And uh, I expect that four or five years from now that, and, and, and this will affect a number of things, that the amount of money being sent to people by Social Security, which government doesn't have to do even though they can't collected the tax and spent it all, 
could easily drop by 50%. But pension payouts would drop by 50% as well. Uh, the average pension fund last year lost 30%, and that was $900 billion. In the first two months of this year, they lost a trillion dollars. So they're already down 45 to 50%. And uh, that's, you know, on their portfolios from 20 months ago. Um, the the, um, uh, the S&P 500 stock companies are only now, even at 8,000 on the Dow, are only 60% funded, and that goes for state, municipal, city, county employee funds as well. And uh, they don't have any uh, any kind of insurance. Some of the companies that have pensions do, and uh, they paid into this plan. And um, anyway, the answer is there's a good chance that they'll be cut and uh, or the private pension plans will be rolled into Social Security so the people who got them will get screwed. And hopefully for subscribers, we'll get everybody out if we have to in plenty of time from these retirement plans, even if you have to quit your job, because that's where all this is headed. I mean, there are people who I've run into who are watching these very closely as subscribers, and they're saying, uh, "I'd be, you know, I will let my job go because I, I have a million dollars in that account, or I have four hundred thousand. This is some big money in there." Uh, and uh, I think people uh, are stressed about it, just like the question uh, from this person who sent it in, and they should be. I mean, there's a lot of people just living on Social Security. And only 19% of Americans have pensions. And the people today who are retiring today, most don't have more than 100000 in an IRA. Most of the amounts are 20000 30000 50000 And so there's no great savings there. And for those of you who are not retired as yet, your expenses only go down slightly when you go into retirement, unless you, you know, have a home and it's fully paid for and you stay there all day, every day, and do nothing. Because activity means there's a cost to that activity. And so uh, I have told people over and over and over again, if you're 65 and, or 66 and you're healthy, and you can continue to work, please do. And maybe not something you want to do, but even if you extend it to 71 or 72, if that's possible, then uh, that's that much that you might be able to put aside in gold and silver coins for a rainy day. And uh, the rainy day is coming. Uh, we're going to have over a third of the people in the country unemployed. And uh, there's very few people who agree with me on that, but most people never agree with me because uh, they don't have the insight, the foresight. Uh, people reject negativity. Uh, you shouldn't do that. Negativity should be taken in and analyzed, and it should be put to good use. It's just like, Again, the older people, after you're 60, start reinventing yourself every day. It's very important. And quite frankly, don't hang around with old people. Hang around with 40, 50-year-old people who are young and vibrant and doing things. You know, I lived in God's waiting room, and that's exactly what it is in Florida. And for me, it was lose-lose. I, I don't think it's a good idea to live that way. And, you know, you know, Minnie just went in to have a heart transplant, and her husband Joe just had his leg cut off and all this sort of thing. And when you're surrounded by this all the time, 
when you're over a hospital once a week, you know, visiting people and, and all of that sort of thing, it, it's, it's debilitating to the healthy. And so uh, I'm not saying abandon your friends and your family, but I am saying don't live in the middle of it. Uh, it's, it's not good. Now, there are places in Florida you can live that are not overwhelmed with retirement age people, and you can go live there. And incidentally, Florida has been quite cool this past winter, so you're not going to sweat it out if the weather stays.